Hello, today I am making in scale dwarf signals out of plastic and evergreen styrene strips and tubes. Uh, I'm using 90603, the 2.4 millimeter styrene tubes for the shrouds. I'm using <clears throat> 90750s, the 1.5 millimeters for push rods to go inside to hold the lights. I'm using 90621s, the 3.2 millimeter square tubes for the, sh the poles and the actual part of the door flight. Uh, using number 148s from Evergreen, uh, just a strip, uh, 4.8 millimeters, or you can get the uh, 3.6, uh, I think. Uh, I'm using it for the tops, uh, so you can get anything that will fit for the top. Uh, the 1.5s fit in for a flush top, or you can have one flat on top like I'm doing. And I'm using uh, 253s, the 4.8 millimeter for uh, the base. So first thing that I do is I take my I think 3 30 seconds drill bit and I drill out the 3.2 millimeter tubes to fit my LEDs I'm using I think they're called 602s the red green bicolor LEDs they're about uh, 3 millimeters 2.8 millimeters so they're not they're too big to fit inside of the tube without boring it out. So bore it out a little bit until it's nice and loose. Once you've bored the tube out, take the same drill bit and not too close to the end as you'll split it and not too close to either side, slowly work the drill back and forth until you've drilled a hole in the top layer and if you split it just chop it off and start over and if you just go slow you'll get a nice hole in there now with your hole and you cut it to length if you need they don't have to be dwarf signals, you're making the end look like any kind of signal you want. Or just like a regular signal rather, so you can make it as long or as short as you want. And so I chop the top to level it up here, leave about a millimeter and a half or so. And I like to have them, I'm making only dwarf lights, uh, I'll have one or two tall ones in this style. But uh, So I cut them about a couple inches. Just enough to go underneath my decking material uh, and hold it in the hole quite well so so that's basically the first step is to cut the uh, 3.2 millimeter square tubes see if I can get that drill a hole in it is the camera gonna zoom on it and overboard so now that you cut it you can uh, bore out the bottom Now you want to cut your lid, so you basically just line it up to where you want it, and just cut a lid. And I like to take the lid, put it on a piece of uh, double sided tape, and then you can glue it. And you put the glue on there and glue it, and then the end result would be you have a lid glued onto the top, and after a little bit of sanding and smoothing, it's not too tall like my first version, so it looks ends up being a covered box there. All right, so now that you have a lid, you can take your, take a little piece of the uh, 4.8 millimeter square tube, just cut a little sliver, not very big. I'm just gonna cut a little sliver and this is gonna be our base. And what you'll do is you'll slide it through there. Uh, okay, what you do is slide it through there and position it where you want it. And this will determine how tall it is. So I like to put mine right there. And you can 
see here's a completed one to compare against. And once you have that, a little bit of glue. Glue it up in the position you want. And we'll let that glue dry. And I'll just show you on this one while the glue dries for that one. So next step what I would do is with that in place, I'm just gonna show you on one, one like this, is I take a file and I score it right underneath the light and then I score it just a millimeter below and I form a notch that goes all around the entire thing. notch it too much because you'll jeopardize the strength of your light. I kind of messed this one up a little bit. So after a good bit of filing you file out a little notch. Doesn't look all that great but uh, not too worried about that. See so a little notch and that notch helps define separation from the base. It gives you a separate place to color. I'm going to make mine silver so it looks like the mechanism that fits under the prototype. Which is just pretty much the square one, I forget what they're called. And there it goes. So then, next step, we want to put our shroud on. So we take our tube stock our 90603s, which we shall find one of here. And we take a little bit of our sandpaper, and at about, uh, you know, whatever angle you want, but maybe 45 or less, I don't know. Go back and forth until you get a nice long angle. We are losing half of it. I just shave half of it away as yeah, camera. Okay, and then put it on some tape and you cut it. And I have several here I've made. I'm trying to keep them all looking the same. So I make a pre make uh, about 10 of them, and uh, that way all of them will look pretty darn close. I'm not too picky, but. Once you have the hood cut, I'd like to take my file uh, and on the narrow end, just kind of go back and forth, not too much because there's not a lot of material in the uh, 2.4 millimeters. <laughs> and then you file it out a little bit and you want to stretch it just a little bit. You could use the 3.2 uh, millimeter tubes, but uh, they are a little too big, uh, but work quite well if you're wanting to enclose the entire light. But in the case of the uh, 602 LEDs, they're flat. And uh, when you overbore the box, they fit quite well inside the box. So now that you've made your shroud, and bent it out just a little bit, you go back to your tube. Right side up here. This one from gluing the top on, so I have the top on that one glued. So we'll go back here. We'll dab. It's missing the top. Alright, after you put the top on here. Alright, so you have the top on, we put our base on, and <clears throat> so now you have a top and the base probably would be glued on but we're not going to wait so you have the top and you cut your hood it's a little dab and dab of glue right here on the tippy top to put your shroud on and then I like to use the tweezers sometimes they work, sometimes they don't and then 
replace your shroud. And then check your position and see how good it looks. It looks good enough for, for my purposes. Uh, in this case, a little longer than some of the other ones I made, but uh, I don't really care. So then you'd get a shroud and you get the thing. So now, you let that dry. So if you notched it, put the lid on it, put the shroud on it, threw some paint on it, come out looking like that. So, rough product, the, the base, a notch, a hood, and the top. And if you cleaned it all out, I like to use just the little wire I use on my turnouts. Make sure it's nice and clean. Once it's all clean, find your LED. In this case, this is my test one that I broke yesterday. Uh, find your LED, but you want to take one of the uh, 90750s on 1.5 millimeters, and I use this as a push rod to help shove and hold the LED in there so I can remove them, uh, even though <clears throat> removing them so far has not been that easy. So I like to find the front, pretend all the wires are in there, and then you just jam it in there, and then uh, carefully. Like I said, I've broken a couple already, but uh, if you're careful, you won't break them. Uh, I break them taking them out. And you definitely won't be able to see that, but uh, I can see as soon as I have it shoved up in there enough, uh, I can see the light clear. So, and you can see uh, just the uh, pressure from the rod, friction or whatever it would be, is enough to hold that light in there. So the lights actually don't move around. and. Uh, pulling it out if you overboard it enough it is perfectly easy so that is my in scale dwarf or other type of signal idea for the uh, 602 I think maybe 605 LEDs red green yeah enjoy <laughs>